Democratic Football Lads Alliance on the march. What do we want? Justice! Among them, in the centre here wearing a suit, is the UKIP leader, Gerard Batten. Sky News is the only broadcaster present, and we're not invited. No, no trouble. No trouble. Anyone goes to the it doesn't feel like no trouble. Ahead, a row of police are hoping to separate them from a group of anti-racism protesters. The Football Lads Alliance try to break through. They are supposedly here to peacefully demonstrate against the rape of women and children by Muslim gangs. But it doesn't turn out to be peaceful. The Football Lads Alliance was formed by a football hooligan to unite supporters from different clubs against Islam. Its Facebook page has been criticised for racist content and the group has since renamed itself the Democratic Football Lads Alliance. So who are these people? None of us are racist. I'm an EDL member. I'm a Tommy Robinson boy. I'm sick of the corrupt government telling us lies, blacking out. They're, they're, they're doing blackouts on news media. Look what's happening in Paris, France, Germany, all things Sweden. That, all things that look, were reported. Look, all things that no, were they weren't reported, reported on, the on correctly. They weren't reported on correctly. Are you from what? Sky News. Sky News. Sky News. Oh, the biggest liars out there. Yeah. So why don't you report accurate news? Why don't you report about all the rapes that are going on, all the Islamic mean? terrorism that's going on? You know full well what's well, going on. We have reported on terrorist attacks. And we have reported on what's what, been going on in so Telford. Why, why, do, why do you label people? Cities. How else would you know? Why do you label like people? Like, like just, why oh, do you God, label people? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you, why do you call us racist? We asked the counter-protesters why they think the group is racist. What's your problem with these guys? They're racist! Why? They say they're just protesting against rape. They do, yeah, but they need a moral cover, don't they? We stand with the victims of rape who could be any colour from any religion or um, any nationality. They're only interested in having a go at Muslims. That's a new form of racism. If we allow it to divide us, we're shot. So what is the leader of UKIP doing here? This is a Football Lads Alliance march. I mean, how do you feel associating UKIP's name with that? Uh, they've all, I've already given talks to their groups. Lots of them have joined us. They are democratic. Uh, as you can see, they're against extremism of any kind. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with there it. There have been issues around racist comments on their website, uh, calling for Sadiq Khan to be hanged, for example. We have website, mate, on your Facebook we have page. website. No, so you, all you're going to do now is try to disparage what we're doing, no, no, put out some more I fake news. So I didn't agree not, to do an, not, an interview, so I'm news, here to I'm do... I'm just asking I mean, you. No, because what you'll do is what you always okay. do. You'll raise some issue that's not relevant. As this gentleman said, it's already told you they don't have a website. They do have a website. So, they have a Facebook well, page. That's how, we knew this, that's how we knew this was happening. You go off and you say whatever you want to no, say, no, just, and I'll do what, my stuff no, but here. Could you answer okay. that? You don't... It's fair I enough do to not ask, answer that question. Which you question? Have, which you, question? You, you presumably condemn things such of as... Of I do. I've spent 25 years running, being a member of a moderate party and now running a moderate party, yeah. a democratic party. We've always said that, always done that. You cannot control individuals saying stupid things. They do it in all parties. Why, why so that's you, the end of the why, interview. No, Thank no, you. But why when, you, why when, you're, enough, why when enough, you've enough, got the... Enough, you, enough, I think we've got more to ask you. No, but he doesn't want to answer, does he? The former UKIP leader thinks this is an unnecessary distraction for the party. My concern with all of these groups is that that argument spills over into actually being an enemy of an entire religion, and that is not 
the place we need to be. Uh, for, for every reason. It's the wrong thing to do and it won't work anyway. Do you fear that that's what Gerald Batten is falling down that track? Well, I don't think he's there yet, but I think he's got to be careful what company he keeps. Back at the rally, Mr Batten had this to say about Muslim grooming gangs. So the age of consent in Islamic culture uh, is a lot more elastic than it would be in Western culture. People here insist that they're not fascist, they don't like to be called far right, but the overriding view is that Muslims are dangerous and that immigration is bad. And this does feel like a reincarnation of the EDL, but it's also got the leader of UKIP, Gerard Batten, on the stage. And what he's saying is pretty much indistinguishable from what you might hear from Tommy Robinson. Indeed, Gerard Batten wants the former EDL leader to join his party. Unfortunately, we were forcibly stopped from recording the whole of his speech. You've got to report the truth. Unedited truth. I've got you there, have not I? I've got you! Unedited truth! I'm editing what he's saying. Unedited. You won't let me near that. Yeah, because you're full of but this weekend at UKIP's party conference, delegates will decide whether to reverse rules to ban former members of far-right groups from joining UKIP. That would change the face of the party and give anti-Muslim sentiment a new home. Jason Farrell, Sky News. Hello, yes, all Joe Owens' predictions are coming true. That's right. You've just watched a six minute odd report, a Sky News report on the Democratic Football Ads Alliance and UKIP leader Jared Batten. He was on the march and spoke at the rally, uh, talking about grooming, all the usual stuff that the public's not interested in. Um, he's talking about uh, how he supports the Democratic Football Lads Alliance, which is a split from the Football Lads Alliance. You see, that's something else that happens, uh, what the state does, is it, it builds something up the Football Lads Alliance, then it splits it, like it done the same with the EDL. It split the EDL to Northwest Infidels and so on and so on. That's what it does. It creates these outfits, but it doesn't want them to get too big, right? That's probably why Tommy Robinson left EDL because it was getting massive and probably out of control. So they split it and then he left and that's what they do. But anyway, the Sky News report is very, very telling, isn't it? There's hooliganism, there's fighting, there's violence, there. Uh, intimidating and very aggressive with the Sky News reporter. Uh, the, there's the usual, you know, idiots on there, aging football hoolies that are embarrassing, Christ. There'll be a few of them that were definitely agent provocateurs winding the police up, uh, jumping up and down and shouting and waving various objects. Some of them will definitely be agent provocateurs without a doubt, right? Uh, but anyway, also, at the end of this video, I've left a video I made in June regarding Jared Batten and what his next move would be, or should I say his control is, and lo and behold, it's like I've had a crystal ball in front of me. It really is uncanny, but it's so predictable now what they're doing. It's so obvious that I, I've said that before, you see. What they're going to do now is they're going to change UKIP, courtesy of Jared Batten, into some... Um, Tommy Robinson Roadshow Part 2. It'll just be another EDL Part 2 with some democracy, legitimacy and uh, standing in elections and all that stuff. But it will have a taint of violence with it. It'll be like an old National Front from the 70s, let's say. And that's what they're turning it into. Now, they allowed Tommy Robinson to join. I think they have a conference this week, is it? Uh, don't rule it out. He then, in time, doesn't run for leadership of UKIP and they've got full control of it then, haven't they? You know, the Jared Batten will just be moved to one side and uh, he'd have done his dirty deed and paid his shekels and he'll go on his way and it's in the hands of Tommy now. That may not happen, I don't know, but we shall see. Don't rule it out, don't rule it out at all. And also for you, Nigel Farage, if you're watching, I'll be honoured. If you still, and I'm not saying you do, if you still believe all this is an accident, a coincidence, bad judgment on Jared Batten's part, then be my guest. And like I've said before, and I'll say again, 
before Theresa May, Vincent Price can stab Britain in the back if she can. She's uh, up against it, though. She's up against it. Let's see what happens. They've got to first finish UKIP off because that's where the rebellion, that's where the um, the fight back, that's not the word, I'll tell you. The backlash, that's the word, that's the word. That's where the backlash is going to UKIP. And the powers that be, they know that only too well. So they've now got their man in charge, Jared Batten. He took over from the other spy, um, Jer um, Henry Bolton, Henry Bolton, his toxic love affair with Joe Marley. Again, Nigel Farage, if you want to believe that was all an accident, then be my guest. Uh, whether or not you've known these people 20 years or 30 years is irrelevant, right? They've, they've been trained to do this, to be quiet, to be sleeper agents and do their dirty deeds when called upon and they're doing them now. But anyway, so... Uh, if you want to still believe it's all an accident, then be my guest. But it's not. It's not an accident. As I've said, they've got their man now in control of UKIP. He's going to turn it into a Tommy Robinson Roadshow Part 2 with Tommy Robinson on board, no doubt. Um, and it's just going to descend into violence. And like Tommy Robinson said, you may lose 2,000 members, but you'll gain 20,000. Yeah, 20,000 angry heads that don't... That, they don't want to engage in real sensible electoral politics. They just want the pantomime and circus. All the good people will leave and it will just be, as I've said, a Tommy Robinson Roadshow Part 2. Uh, and it'll be the end of it. And this is what they're doing. It's so predictable. It's so transparent. Christ. Stevie Wonder would see through it. It's a shame Nick Griffin didn't see through it when I was warning him in the um, late 2000s regarding Alan Walker and Clive Jefferson and co. They're doing the, they were doing the same then, what Jared Batten's doing now. The MO doesn't change, just the faces do. So Joe Owens' predictions, once again, are all spot on, aren't they? They're, they're, it, it's like I've had a crystal ball in front of me. And uh, you've got to get back in there, Nigel Farage, but you're going to be up against it. I don't think they're going to let you, but we shall see, right? But British nationalism, we should be up there now riding high. Only for Nick Griffin. He's pushing this reconquista nonsense now where 1% of the population go away somewhere and have kids and their kids have kids. And I'm thinking 1% of the population, there's 66 million people in Britain. Let's just say there's 50 million whites, probably a lot more. That's 1%, that's 500,000 people are going to embark on the reconquista. What a load of baloney, Christ. Okay, thank you. Hello, yes, Jared Batten works for the secret state that's right just like his predecessor does henry bolton remember him the little jack russell was having a toxic love affair with joe marley that turned sour and nearly brought ukip to its knees but like i've said before what the secret state does it's disruption it's subversion it's not naked disruption and subversion it's always under the cover of something in henry bolton's case it was a love affair that uh, as I say, turned sour and went wrong and nearly brought UKIP to its knees. That's what they do. Now, in Jared Batten's case, his cover is a war on Islam, right? The whole religion like Nigel Farage spoke about, right? A war that UKIP will lose because the public doesn't want a war with Islam or anyone for that matter. And it's a war UKIP will lose. It'll be rejected at the polls. And that's why he's going down that road. He's also picking side issues that, again, the public doesn't care about. Those young girls that enter into the lion's den and end up getting groomed and raped by Muslim paedophiles, there's not really much we can do about that. They're just sad cases that haven't had a start in life, if at all, and they've ended up with that loss. There's nothing we can do about it. Plus, there's other needy young children that need uh, or concern and attention more so than those lot. There's nothing we can do about them. Also, female genital mutilation. Again, that will never, ever, ever affect 99.99% of non-Muslim women. Right? If they want to practice that barbaric act upon one another, then be my guest. Again, we've got more important things to think of, like our own children. Right? Our own children that um, are having a bad time and a bad start in life. We're, we've got them to think of, not... Muslim children or Somali kids or is it I'm not quite sure is it a cultural thing that more so than a uh, religious one but whoever it's practiced upon we've got our own children 
to think about, right? Barbaric and wicked and twisted and evil as it is, like I've said, we've got our own people uh, to be concerned about. So he's pushing all this and many other issues. He's going on all these demos and marches and he's on, you know, he's part of the Tommy Robinson Road show now and it will, as intended, alienate UKIPers and it'll alienate them at the polls. You see, what's going to happen now with um, Jared Batten is I reckon there's going to be so much consternation with him where UKIPers are getting restless and they don't like it and the good ones can see the destructive, negative uh, aspects of his Tommy Robinson road show and the war with Islam. They may then opt for another leadership challenge and then so begins the process again of a new leader demoralising more UKIPers, more voters and so on and so on. That may be their next move. I don't know with not being privy to everything. I can only guess. But if they do, I've got a good idea who's lining up for the next role as UKIP leader. And he's another one that works with the secret states. Like I said, Mr Farage, I don't think you've really fully appreciated the forces that are not just against British nationalism in the form of the once mighty National Front, the once successful BMP. They're against any form of uh, patriotism, populism, that is not part of the status quo, let's say, right? That could change things for the good. They're not part of that leftist mindset. Tories and Labour and everyone else, Lib Dems are all signed up to. You see, I believe since the Second World War, we haven't really had a true patriot that's been running our country. I don't believe, I wouldn't even put uh, Winston Churchill in that category. Trust me, I wouldn't, right? Now, we haven't really had a British patriot leader leading our country that has put the interest of Britain and the British people first. Margaret Thatcher, she sold us out. Sold us out the Anglo-Irish Agreement in 1986. Sold us out to immigration in 79 and so on and so on. She sold us out, right? They're all seem to be subservient to either the money power or the leftist mindset. So we haven't really had a uh, British patriot that's been running this country. Not at all, right? So the forces out there to stop any change are massive, Mr Farage, even against populists like yourself, let alone British nationalists like John Sindel, the late great John Sindel and the foolish daft Nick Griffin, but anyway, and you call that because you, you, it warrants being, you warrant being called that because you're just an idiot at the moment. And it's very sad is you have got potential, but you're in your daft phase again now and hobnobber with Jack Senna, who not hates by, it's bizarre. But anyway, so I don't think you've really appreciated Mr. Farage, the forces waged against anyone changing the status quo, right? I don't believe you've really appreciated it. Now you probably are. You're probably noticing what's happening around UKIP. Is it all an accident? Another coincidence? You know, it, it's not. It can't be that since you resigned or packed in whatever as leader of UKIP, UKIP's been beset with problem after problem after problem and they're all following the same modus operandi aren't they it's all destructiveness it's all badness that you know is crippling UKIP now Jared Batten like I've said we shall see what is next move or moves or we shall see right but it will be to the detriment of UKIP he will push policies that the old UKIP under Nigel Farage would never have, uh, have taken on board. Never do. They rejected them. So he will deliver for his control as he'll have to. But is he then going to be deposed and there's another leadership challenge? And as I say, so on and so on. And so goes the merry-go-round. We shall see. Also, Mr Farage, while I'm on, I'm on about talking about yourself. Um... What's the point in getting out the European Union and leaving the same incompetence, criminals and outright traitors running the show? That doesn't make sense. Because what's stopping Labour if they're elected in the very near future 
reversing it and saying we're going back into the European uh, Union without a referendum or whatever. Or they have another referendum and they, they vote to go back in uh, and so on, right? So you can't leave the same incompetence, criminals, out, out traitors in control. Why would you do that? You know, so your work's only really just beginning if you think about it. That's a big major, a big step getting out the European Union, but it's only the beginning of solving a bigger issue, and that's getting these swines out that are all signed up to, all subscribed to, the leftist liberal mindset. They all want no borders, they all want unlimited immigration and all the other crackpot nonsense, they all, they're pushing transgender or whatever. They're all behind the, the nonsense that's destroying us. So to get out the European Union and leave the country in the hands of the people who put it in this mess in the first place is madness, right? So they have to go. We have to, you have to get back on board, either take back control of UKIP or a new political party, and you have to kick the traitors out into the Thames and put a patriot there, because it's no good the same show, the same carry-on continuing, is it? Well, exactly. But Jared Batten, he works with the secret states. He will be delivering soon. That You'll have to cause... Either a blatant disruption, Henry Bolton style, or he'll just push more and more of uh, the war with Islam, the war on Islam, and uh, befriend the Toby Robinson Road Show and other extremists, as the public may see them, or just other crackpots and weirdos. And uh, he'll have to deliver. It just depends on in which way he's going to do it. Is it going to be? The Henry Bolton way, or is it just going to be a more subtle way? Now, the spotlight's on him, where he'll just jump on board the Tommy Robinson Road show, declare war on Islam and just scare everyone to death and frighten them away, which in turn may spark another leadership election. And here we go again. But I've got an idea who's, uh, who's, in the, who's waiting in the sidelines to maybe take his place, and then probably the same will happen again. So... Jared Batten does indeed work for the secret state. If I've got this all wrong, how does everything I keep saying always come true? How? You need to get back in there, Mr Farage, because your job's really only just beginning. Okay, thank you.